You guys are all good. All right, guys. Hi, guys. I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. Today, I'm talking about the famous Bishop Oyedipo quote uh, that was on all the blogs. Uh, this quote allegedly came from him. Uh, and I want us to, to address uh, this. So, where's the, the post again? I know a lot of men loved the post, but what, what do the scriptures really say regarding submission? So, let's go ahead and do that. On Linda Ikeji's blog, it's seen as the only way to a fruitful marriage is total submission on the part of the wife. Total submission. Total submission does or do the scriptures say total submission to your spouse? Let's talk about this from a scriptural point of view. Of course, we, we intend no harm. This is just us sharing a scriptural perspective uh, to counter what we believe uh, that in my opinion, is wrong scripturally. So let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for everything you've done in our lives. I bless the day we knew you as our God. And I bless the wonderful presence we have shared together, submitted to you in grace. Father, we're covered, we're immersed, we're drenched in your love and we seek your wisdom so we can unravel the mysteries of life as we grow from grace to grace in you O Lord in Yahushua's name I pray and all the good people in the house all said a big amen according to the story on Linda Ikeji's blog you can also find uh, the story on insta blog let me quickly balance it off by telling you what insta blog Nigeria has to say Instablog Niger uh, puts it this way. Uh, coming from his Twitter account, his verified Twitter account, the only way to a fruitful marriage is submission on the part of the wife. Until it is in place, every other thing she tries to do will be out of place. A woman who refuses to submit to her husband is disobeying God. As a woman, you might even be a minister of the gospel and your husband is not. The word of God still says, submit yourself to him. A submissive woman is precious in the sight of her husband. He now quoted Ephesians chapter two, Ephesians chapter five, verse 22. Uh, and it's exactly like that, except Linda Ikeji's blog reports that Bishop David Oyedepo, the Living Faith Church, of the Living Faith Church, I beg your pardon, says the only way to a fruitful marriage is when a wife totally submits to her husband. The clergy, who has been married for 38 years now, said this in a post that he shared on his Instagram page today, the 3rd of September. Uh, one thing I know is I'm not sure the bishop is has enough time to sit on Instagram. I'm sure he said it somewhere and somebody... I'm, let me not say I'm sure. I'm assuming that somebody probably paraphrased him and put it on Instagram. But at least the context of what he was trying to say is understood. Let's discuss this. He quoted Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. If you followed us in the Free Nation, uh, you will know that we never... I will never teach you a Bible class using one scripture. It is dangerous. I will never. In the free nation, we never. We need to, you see, when, when, when you're reading Ephesians, for instance, that's Paul. You need to understand Paul. You need to support what Paul says from Christ or else it becomes dangerous especially when you choose one line ignoring 
the previous verse. You see, this is how the Pentecostal church has run for quite a while. They just pick one line and they use it as a doctrine and everybody says amen. Did you read what was before Ephesians 5, 21? I'll get Amarachi to read it to me. Amarachi. Ephesians 5, 22. All right? Come and read it. You can just stay there. You can just stay right there. Read 22. Then when you are done, hit that button to take you back. So just read it aloud. Yes. So you read 21. Read 22. 22 is what he quoted. Come closer. Yeah. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as you do to the Lord. Why don't you read what came just before it? Ephesians 5, 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So he started it with saying, submit to one another. And then he is saying, wives, submit. So the first stage, if we were to take this scripture in context would be first of all both of you need to submit to one another before that there's a heading on most uh new translations as the niv nlt it says spirit guided relationships wives and husbands a spirit guided relationship for wives and husbands then it starts and further submit yourselves out of reverence for christ that is ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 if we were to read it in the original language the new testament was first written in which is greek you need to understand that the New Testament was not written in Aramaic or Hebrew or Latin. Its first language was Greek. And this is what the Greek Bible says. Hypotasomeno, alleloa, and phobo Christo. Be submitting yourselves to one another in a reverence of Christ. Be submitting yourselves to one another. The two of you, be submitting to one another. Then Paul goes on to explain Clara. He says, For wives, this is what it means. It means submit to your husband as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands. This means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. To make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Some people think, first of all, the instruction is both of y'all need to submit to one another. In totality. Then the second instruction goes first to the wife. But it may seem it goes first to the wife. It may seem the first instruction actually goes to the husband. And let me prove this to you. It says, for us, for wives, this means submit to your husbands as the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of his church. So you are to submit the way the church submits 
to Christ. The scriptures doesn't say submit as a wife, as a church submits to the devil. Right? It doesn't say submit to Pilate. It doesn't say submit to Paul or to the pastor. It says submit to the likeness of Christ in your home. This puts a man in his home in the place of Christ. Somebody is telling me I lack knowledge. Let me block him. So for a wife to submit, it's like the church is submitting to Christ. Let's look at what Christ did for the church. Husband, have you done it for your wife? You want your wife to be the church that submits to the Christ. Are you the Christ? Have you laid down your life for your wife? It doesn't start with the wife because the wife as the church need if the if Christ did not lay his life down for the church the church would not submit to Christ so it starts first with the Christ a woman will never lay down or submit herself to a man who she doesn't see the grace of Christ in a man who lacks self-control a man who cheats. A man who lies. If Christ were the husband of the church, do you think Christ will hide his password from the church? Do you think Christ will hide his account from the church? Let us have this conversation, guys. You guys don't like what I say because it spoils your little, it bursts your little bubble. Do you think in today's world, Christ will be alive and married to the church and Christ will have secrets from the church? Let's have this discussion. So the responsibility first starts with Christ. I want you to look at someone and tell them the responsibility in submission first starts with Christ. Before Christ was able to get a church, before Christianity was able to be formed as a belief system, somebody had to give his life up. And it wasn't the wife. The church didn't have to give up its life for Christ. The church didn't have to sit at home and do chores while Christ went out boogieing. Christ was the one who laid his life down first. So then the church can now submit to the epitome of perfection, to the epitome of purity, to the epitome of responsibility. You are not responsible. What do they want to submit to? There is nothing to submit to in some people. And you cannot blame a woman who refuses to submit to a drunk. You cannot blame a woman who refuses to submit someone who's not ready to go out there and work and pay bills. Out of nothing, Christ fed the 5,000. That was the church right there. He made sure they were fed. You don't feed your woman emotionally, physically, sexually, psychologically, mentally, financially, and then you want her to submit to you because Paul wrote one line that you forget to read what is before and forget to read what is after? It doesn't work like that. 
If you want a submissive woman, you've got to be a Christ. No woman on the face of the earth will not submit to a man who bears the likelihood of Christ. A man who serves his woman the way Christ served the church. Let's remember that Christ washed the feet of the disciples. That was the church. Can you wash your woman's feet? I'm asking you. You see, when you study the scriptures emotionally, you end up in error. The scriptures are meant to be read spiritually, understanding the depth. You lose the essence of scripture when you read it emotionally. Women must submit. A woman must submit in totality. If she does not submit in totality, no, sir. The woman must see what she's submitting to. When a guy comes and lies to a woman and then breaks her heart and goes away, and then the woman is heartbroken. When you start asking the woman questions, why? Ah, he was so handsome. Handsome. Oh, he was from a good home. He had a great job. He used to take me out and pamper me. There was something she fell in love with. That is why you see those guys that, wear, that have dreadlocks and sit at the roundabout, they ain't breaking nobody's heart because there's nothing to submit to. So it starts with us men. Understand scripture in context. First of all, they say both must submit. I bring it to you men. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. As I'm speaking to you now, we have to start submitting your passwords to your wives. Submit, 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 submit. I don't want to hear anything. I'm not going to continue this sermon until people have started submitting their passwords. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, all of you. Husbands and wives, let's start with submitting passwords. Oh yeah, each of you, submit to yourselves. You are in a relationship where people are hiding from each other. Where, people, where your friends are closer to you than your husband. Or your friends are closer to you than your wife. And then you want to say, I am the man in this home no it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that any woman that submits to a man that doesn't display the christ in him is wasting her time the fact that he's your husband is proven only by a court document. And that paper, in reality, is hardly what, what's printed on it. The truth in a relationship is love. When you submit, you submit your heart. You know where your husband is at any time of the day. Even if he's out there with his friends enjoying a beer and some Ishe Wu or Suya or Unkwobi, you know that he doesn't have a CC with him there. You know you can leave your husband at home with your house girl and you're not going to come back a few weeks later and your house girl is waking up in the morning and throwing up. You do. Any woman who submits to a man like that, I'm not saying the one that does it in error, the one that does his life lifestyle. Small CC, no fee move, come their area. The girl don't enter trouble. One month later, the girl go to regret, say, ah, why not go another estate? On top person, husband. Who are you submitting to? A man who can't take care of you? I'm not talking about a man who's poorer than the woman. Situations sometimes create a scenario where 
the man is earning less than the woman. But you see, when you look at Oimbo people's lives, who follows Supercar Blondie here? You seen Supercar Blondie? Supercar Blondie, who follows Supercar Blondie here? That um, blonde girl that does supercars, Ferraris, Mac McLarens, Lamborghinis. On her husband's birthday this year, she bought him a diamond encrusted Frank Mueller. She took him to the Frank Mueller shop in Dubai. There were balloons everywhere. And she went in and gave him the box. And then she introduced her husband. She said her husband gave up everything. When he saw that she, she was beginning to blow. Supercar Blondie has 2 million Facebook. 18 million Instagram. How many mil Instagram? Let me even check. Then another two point something million YouTube. Supercar Blondie. She has 6.8 million on uh, Instagram. Then on YouTube, she has Supercar Blondie on YouTube. She has 4.32 million. I'm going to read out to you her last five videos so you understand the kind of viewership she has. She has last four days ago, 271,000 views. Before that, six days ago, 887,000 views. One week ago, 565,000 views. And not one week ago, again, 222,000 views. Still a week ago, 690,000 views. Two weeks ago, 793,000 views. On 500,000 YouTube views, you get paid about $3,000. Just sitting here, I can tell you in the last two weeks, she's earned $10,000 just from YouTube alone. Facebook, I hear, pays even more than YouTube. And then the whole influencing work on Instagram, you'd be amazed that easily she'll be work, walking away with $20,000 a month from my, I may be wrong, that's why I said easily. The husband saw the potential in his wife. He didn't say, submit to me. Oh, you supercar blondie. You must submit to me. You know what the man, the husband did? He became her cameraman. Supercar Blondie's husband became her cameraman. So she said it herself. I'll show you the video, Marachi. She said, you don't usually see my husband because he's the man behind the camera. So instead of him going to do his own job and hiring somebody to be following his wife up and down, be doing her camera work, he decided to be her cameraman. So the husband quit his job to support his wife. I want to now ask you, as supercar blondie, will you submit to your husband in that instance? I'm asking all of you, would you? Somebody saying nonsense. This is somebody who is poor, whose wife is poor. <laughs> the dollars I'm talking about, I'm sure if they gather you together, turn you upside down, make things fall from your pocket. We know if you gather $2,000. Yet, you are saying nonsense to a woman who bought her husband a Frank Mueller filled with diamonds that is more expensive than the house you live in. That watch will probably buy your house too. To you, it will always be nonsense because you don't understand uh, the essence of scripture. You don't understand the reality. 
that the Bible seeks to preach. Sometimes when the woman sees that you understand her dream, you understand her purpose, you understand her calling, and you mold her, or you help mold her, to fit perfectly into her purpose, she submits by default. Only a demonic, devilish woman will not submit to a man who's helping her align herself with her purpose. So sometimes when I hear a woman must submit in totality, a woman must submit in totality, there are good men out there who don't cheat. There are good men out there who don't beat. There are good men out there who provide but still do not understand your purpose. Imagine a wife. Do you know how many women I have? that will follow their husbands to church in the morning, always insist that they should do first service so that they can quickly come home and catch Daddy Freeze at 10.30 because they want to listen to the truth from Daddy Freeze, but they have to go to church with their husbands. And I was having a conversation with one of those women, and I was like, why don't you just invite your husband? I said, no, ah, my husband does not understand you. How do you submit to a man who lacks understanding? A man who we submit the scriptures to daily. We submit superior arguments to. We submit the spirit and the truth as John chapter 4 recommended. But he can't understand. It's hard to submit to a man like that. And the scriptures are also very clear. Wisdom is supreme. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Get wisdom. Though it cost you all you have, get understanding. A man without understanding cannot expect a woman to submit to him. Because understanding is even deeper than wisdom. A lot of us like to quote Paul when he was speaking to the Corinthians. Go with me. Go with me to First Corinthians. Chapter 14, verse 34. Women shall be silent during church meetings. It is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive, just as the law says. If, to, if they have any questions, they should ask their husbands at home. For it is improper for women to speak in church meetings. This is Paul. It is improper for women to speak in church meetings. I thank the Lord for the grace upon our lives and the understanding that he has blessed us with. Because we can now understand what Pauline concessions are. And we can now understand the superiority of Christian red scripture doctrines 
over Pauline and Peterian concessions. Let me take you to a scripture. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 40. I think I'll, I'll go a little bit before that. 38. Luke 10, 38. As Yahushua and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught them. But Martha, okay, first of all, let's start uh, their home and Mary sat at the Lord's feet. Was that a church? Was that a church, Amarachi? Let me hear you. Was that a church? Hmm? Was it a church? Okay. That was a church. 40. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Yahushua and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits there while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Did Martha speak during a church service? Did she? And what did Christ answer? You see, the difference between Christ and Paul is the difference between spirit and religion. No matter how much good work Paul did, as a human being, he had his shortcomings. Listen to what Christ did. He used every opportunity to preach a sermon. He said to her, Luke chapter 10, verse 41, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these little details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary was busy listening to who? To Christ. Martha interrupted. Christ didn't say, Martha, who told you to ever interrupt me again? Don't you know you should go and speak to your husband? Let me ask you a question. Did Martha have a husband? Did she have a husband? So if we were to follow Paul, Martha would not ever have knowledge. Because she doesn't have husbands to teach at home. Abby, Paul said, if you have any questions, ask your husbands at home. As Martha no get a husband, it means say she go die, says no go just enter her head. Am I making sense to you? But Christ in the perfection and purity of his grace used that opportunity to correct her. Let me ask you, if you follow Paul's doctrine, who is going to correct the single women that don't have husbands? Who is going to correct the divorcees who is going to correct the separate, separated women? If women are not allowed to speak in church, I must ask their husband. When you don't have a husband, who do you go to? Go with me to John chapter 4. Go with me to John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. Yahushua said, you know what, let me introduce it to you so you know who he's, who he's talking about. John chapter 4, verse 4. He had to go through Samaria on his way, eventually came to a, Samarian, a Samaritan village uh, of Sichar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Yahushua 
tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Yahushua said to her, Please give me a drink. If you jump to nine, the woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. Then if you jump to 13, I'm jumping so because I only want to go somewhere, but I want to establish the conversation. If you jump to 13, Yahushua said, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I will give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring with them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, this woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. And Christ, in John chapter 4, verse 16, said, Go and get your husband. Then the woman replied, I don't have a husband. And Yahushua said, You are right. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. So the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, <laughs> she asked a question. Why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it's here in Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worshipped? And he went on to teach her a sermon, went on and on. And I want to end, I, I want to go to the end of it. 39, verse 39. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Yahushua because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village, so he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Now they said to the woman, now we believe not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves, now we know that he's indeed the savior of the world. They listened to the woman. The men in that village didn't tell the woman. They heard her preach. The first gospel that these people heard came from the woman and she referred them to Christ. I'll take you somewhere else again. Matthew chapter 27. Maybe I should read the version of Luke. Matthew 28 from verse 1. I'll jump a bit and come back to 1. Uh, okay. 7. Matthew 28, 7. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. Okay. So... The disciples were together is the first I want to establish something let's start from one early on Sunday morning as the new day was dawning Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it his face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow the guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. 
The angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Christ who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. First people to know that Christ was risen from the dead, the two Marys. Then if you go to 8, verse 8. The women now ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. As they went, Yahushua met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grabbing his feet and worshiping him. Then Yahushua said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Did the disciples know where he was? Did the disciples know where he was? Imagine Mary, the two Marys, were under Paul's tutelage. What would they first have to do? Instead of first going to the... What would they first have to do? Go and meet their husbands. Thank you very much. So instead of them running to the disciples to tell them, that, ah, Baba, don't they go Galileo? More wrong go there, go meet Baba. Oh. They go first, go, go meet their husband, tell their husband, and their husband will come carry matter, come give disciples. You've got to be able to identify where Paul made human errors. Christ fought for the rights of women. That is why he didn't allow the woman who was caught in the very act be given judgment. Somebody said something. He said, Daddy Freeze, you're wrong. See Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Unto the woman he said, First of all, he's reading King James. You don't know that in Free Nation, we don't read King James. He said, Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Really? Do you really want us to go into the old law? Do you know that? I can't wear what I'm wearing according to the old law because I'm not supposed to wear any cloth that is cut out of two different materials. And here's a tag on my shirt. It's made from a different material from my cloth. That's a sin right there. I'm not allowed to trim my beards. I trimmed my beard yesterday. Oh, I sinned. You can't, I, you see, John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Now we have the Word living amongst us. And the Word has shown us that women are valuable. In John chapter 4, he did not preach the gospel. He preached to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 till John chapter 6. And, and, and when he preached it, all the disciples abandoned him, leaving only 12. So if you can't remove your nose from the trap of religion and start studying the scriptures in context, you will become your own greatest enemy. You will teach a gospel that Christ doesn't understand and the current gospel being preached today, I want to tell you for free, Christ doesn't understand it. Neither do the disciples. It's a strange gospel that you guys have. So how do we reconcile the truth of Christ with the church by remarrying Christ to the church. The current church we have today is separated from Christ. Or should I say, it is currently even divorced from Christ. So we've got to do a reintroduction. Let the dating be between Christ and the church begin afresh. Let Christ and the church get to know one another because the current church doesn't know Christ and Christ doesn't know this church. What we have as the church today is a total and absolute departure from Christ. We need to reconcile what we're teaching is religion. And Christ didn't teach us religion. Religion tells you to do. Christ said is done. Matthew chapter 5. He fulfilled the law. 
Not one stroke would be released, will be erased until it is fulfilled. And it was fulfilled in Matthew chapter 27, verse 50, when he gave up the ghost and released his spirit. And the old covenant with your Genesis chapter 3 was destroyed. Go and watch my teachings on that. I want to thank you all for spending the last 45 minutes with me. It's been wonderful. I'm still coming back again. Um, I'm, I'm supposed to come back by 10, but I'll try to stretch it to 11. Um, we're talking about men and women and how they understand each other. It's not going to be a scriptural sermon. It's just going to be uh, talking because I'm going to be on 99.3 Nigeria Info. So I'd like you to join us. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this there. Um, here's what I want to ask you all. If you're in relationships, remember submission is a two-way lane. It's not a one-way road. It doesn't come from you to the person and doesn't come from the person to you. Always start with Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. You must both submit to one another until you're ready to submit to one another you worship god in vain and your marriage is nothing but a paper contract between two business people two business partners submit to your wife love her lay your life down for her it means your wife needs something you don't deprive her you help her fight her battles. You help her achieve her purpose. Then nobody needs to ask her to submit to you. It's not by bullying. It's not by showing ego as a man. There are some men who try to force their women You don't get anything with pressure. You get everything when you give her pleasure. Please your woman. Understand her. Listen to her. At the end of the day, all these pastors that are shouting, your woman must submit and she doesn't submit, you fight her and she leaves you. Their own wives are inside the house with them. So God bless you all. Take care of yourselves. Look forward to seeing you later today. And tomorrow I'll be preaching about Nigeria, poverty and religion. It's going to be, it's going to be quite an interesting one and I'd love you to, um, to join us tomorrow. Uh, Nigeria is the second most prayerful nation only to Afghanistan. And Elon Musk is irreligious, doesn't pray. And he made more money in 2020 than Nigeria made as a country. And we are the most prayerful nation, second only to Afghanistan. One thing there that is clear, prayer is not in the success equation. It is in the revelation equation. But work is in the success equation. China is the least prayerful nation on earth. And one of the most successful. Take care of yourselves. God bless you all.